I'm sitting on my front doorstep um, watching um, red mason bees hatch out from their cocoons um, and if you see, I'm hoping I'm focused on on um, a little bee who is nibbling I think it's a female because of the size of the cocoon so nibbling her way out of the cocoon that she's um, been living in since um, well, this time last year, really. So, these all look like, a bit like guinea pig droppings. They're a bit bigger than, yeah, you'd have to have had a guinea pig to know what size they are. But, um, whilst I wait for her to emerge, because when she does come out, she will come up very, very quickly and she might fly away. Oh, did you just see? There's another one rolling over. So there are a few of these moving. Oh, there is, look. So look, if you go um, up one o'clock from the bee who's nibbling her way out, there's a, a clearing and there's another cocoon <laughs> where there's a bee just starting to emerge. Um, it's the, is it the 9th of April and I've got time whilst we're watching these to go through the life cycle. So um, this time last year, last year's uh, red mason bees male and then female will have emerged they will have mated um, once they mate the males play no part in the rearing of the young oh, sorry I'm distracted because this one's very close to coming out let's see if I can zoom in without losing the focus Uh, yeah, so they will have mated last year and then the females get to work straight away establishing individual nests. These are solitary bees, like single mums, so they don't live in colonies uh, like honeybees and bumblebees. So for anyone who's heard of or seen a bee hotel, um, that, that's what they often nest in, sort of hollow tubes, often bamboo tubes or cardboard tubes or sometimes you know the oh here she comes oh look at her you're going to see when she emerges that her abdomen is going to be a beautiful beautiful orange red oh look at that gosh they're gorgeous they're not going to say anything for a while <laughs> a little clean you can't see clearly, but these bees as well um, don't collect pollen in pollen baskets the way that bumblebees and honeybees do. They collect their pollen on, you can't see them, but um, stiff branched hairs underneath their abdomens called scopa, which is Italian for broom. So they use them to sweep up the pollen to carry the pollen back to their nests. And this is actually quite early in the morning, it's only about 10 o'clock. So, so this bee is very lucky. She's hatching out at a time when there are not many males around. Oh, is there a male just coming? Be oh, she's going. She's going to fly. If there were lots of males around, they would pounce immediately. They, they mate, sometimes they mate with them whilst they're still trying to get out of the cocoons. Just cleaning her antennae. I hope she turns around and you can... No, she's gone. Beautiful. So um, I just focus on... Yeah, this other one that that's now nibbling her way out as well. Um, females are bigger than the males. So if, if, you, if you can see, some of these cocoons are considerably smaller than the others and they will... There'll be males and then there's lots of them moving now because the sun's coming up. So um, back to the life cycle. So they've emerged last year, they've mated, and the female then, oh great, strimmer, um, chooses um, a nesting site, and, and it'll be a tube, often in a bee hotel, and she gets very, very busy, and she, she goes out, first of all, and collects mud 
um, uh, which she brings back. She's got very powerful mouth parts, mandibles, and she brings the mud back and and deposits some mud at the very back of the tube. Then she goes back some pores, back some pores, collecting pollen until she's laid down sufficient pollen to provide for her young. I hope this is still in focus. Um, and then she lays her first egg uh, next to the little, the little lump of pollen. She, she'll sort of moisten it with a little bit of nectar as well, the, the pollen. So lays an egg and then she goes and gets more mud and she blocks off that cell with the mud. She digs up the mud. Uh, this is why they're called mason bees. So, and then more pollen, another egg and more mud. And she continues that, pollen, egg, mud, pollen, egg, mud, until she gets to the end of the tube. Um, and once she gets to the end of the tube, oh, I should have had one here to show you. Um, she blocks the whole thing off with mud. She seals it completely. And, and she might do this then with another two or three tubes until she's laid, say, around 30 eggs, 20 or 30 eggs. Um, and that, that she basically lays all the eggs that she has inside her body. They've all been fertilised. And, and then she dies. She, she doesn't live to see her young. But what happens then is the eggs um, hatch out after a few days and the, the grubs or the larvae then munch on the pollen that the female has left them, the adult, the mother has left them. Um, and after a couple of weeks um, of, of growing, they, they sort of go through various larval stages, they're called instars, where they, they eat the pollen, grow, shed their skins, eat more pollen, grow. And after a few weeks, they then wrap themselves in these, these cocoons, these little brown cocoons, and they pupate. So they, they go into the cocoons as um, grubs or sort of larvae and a few weeks later they, they develop into adult bees. And, and this is where, um, so this will be ooh, May, maybe early June, and then they remain inside these cocoons um, as adult bees in a, in a form of hibernation um, for another 10 or 11 months until the following year. Now. And and now they're all emerging, and you you see there's loads of them now. This may seem a little bit like paint drying, but there are loads and loads of bees because the sun's out. And the reason that these are all these are not you can see it's, these are not in tubes, um, just to give them a better chance. What you can do, and what what we've done, is remove them all from their tubes. Um, very very carefully um, towards the end of winter uh, just to make sure that, that they're they're clean and you often find you know there are lots of parasites um, and failed cocoons um, and also you, you don't want the 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 tubes to become damp and moldy uh, so this kind of gives them a better chance you don't have to do it people uh, want to put you off putting up bee hotels thinking that it's high maintenance but it's not it's a pleasure it's so much fun oh look see this one here there's loads of them coming out now i'm just going to keep this video on until the next one emerges um, but actually what i might do whilst i'm waiting i'll come back in a moment but i'm just going to go and show you one of the bee hotels that we have in our garden. I can't work out how to edit this to stop and start, so forgive me if you get a bit of pavement. Uh, oh. um, right, so over here is um, one I made earlier. So you can see I, I mentioned the that, that when they finished the tubes, so these tubes, the bamboo one here, you can see are sealed still with soil so the bees haven't emerged from those but you can see one of the top ones uh, there has got a hole in it so bees have emerged from these and here are that's a male um, so these are still still to emerge and this here these are brand new cardboard tubes that I've put in here ready for the females to start laying in they're about eight millimetres in diameter 
and you can get them from the Mason Bee Company. Um, and this little box here with the hole in it is uh, a release chamber, so I've got lots of cocoons in there as well, just waiting to emerge. So that's the Bee Hotel, and we just whilst I'm here, then I'm going to whiz back to the cocoons. Um, one of the flowers that they seem to really enjoy foraging on these bees is forget-me-nots. So we've been sure to plant, we didn't plant them, they've just self-seeded, forget-me-nots nearby um, our bee hotels. So I'm going to whiz back now to the cocoons on the doorstep. Let's see if we can catch a few more emerging. Um, this video is getting a bit long now as well. Oh, oh, look, look, look. Oh, look at you, beautiful. So this one, I think, is a male. Um, it's really hard to see through the viewfinder, but if he turns, if he turns around, if he has a moustache, has he got a moustache? Oh, and he's gone straight away. Isn't he losing no time? Um... Oh, anyway, there you go. This, this this really is a bit like watching paint dry now. Um, and I'm just going to sit here probably for a few more hours watching these bees all emerge. So I hope that's um, made sense and explained a little about what they're all about. And uh, that if you have mason bees at home, yours are all emerging this week as well. So enjoy. <laughs>